So we're going to now bring the EKG in with the movement of blood through and out of the heart. Um, so this looks like a lot of new information. Some there's a few new terms on here, and we're going to start integrating the terms and information you know already about valves, for example. So remember that contraction is referred to as systole and relaxation as diastole. And this is a cycle. This is the cardiac cycle. So it goes around and around and around. We're going to start, um, we're going to start with a P wave, even though this one says start here. We're going to start with this atrial contraction because that's where we started our EKG. So I think that makes sense. Our P wave is going to correspond to atrial depolarization, which um, it, it represents atrial depolarization and is going to correspond to atrial contraction. This is the beginning of atrial systole. Makes sense, right? So the atria contract, and that's going to push all the blood that's in the atria at the time into the ventricles. I'll come back to what I mean by the blood left at the, at the time. So that blood gets pushed into the ventricles. And remember then those AV valves are, gonna are kind of hanging open when the blood is in the ventricles, it's gonna kind of push them closed again and they're gonna stay, um, keep from flapping the other direction from this chordae tendinae. So here is atrial systole. The next phase is when those ventricles depolarize. So the QRS complex is ventricular depolarization and this corresponds to ventricular contraction. But this phase is broken up into a couple of different components because um, we're gonna look at how the increase in pressure is needed to have ventricular ejection. So this first phase is called isovolumic or isovolumetric. Um, isovolumic is actually a little more correct. Um, this is saying same volume, right? That's what iso means. So this is a contraction occurring but the volume in the ventricles is not changing. Why? Because all the valves are closed. The AV valves have closed already and the S semilunar valves have not yet been forced open. So these are the semilunar valves. Um, there's a lot of pressure in here because of that contraction, but there's a moment before that pressure is enough to open the AV valves. So this is high pressure is what I'm writing there. Contraction continues though, and eventually reaches a high enough um, pressure inside to force those SL semilunar valves open and force blood out of the heart. So this is where the semilunar valves open that causes ventricular ejection. So the two phases of ventricular systole are this isovolumic contraction and then ventricular ejection. Okay, then we're done with our ventricular contraction. Ventricles are gonna relax. Um, T wave corresponds to ventricular repolarization. So we have ventricular diastole, that is actually going to last this entire time here. So it's pretty, it's pretty long um, and that'll become important later on, the relative length of ventricular diastole compared to ventricular systole. During ventricular diastole, there's several sub-events happening. Um, the first one is just we're having early in diastole, those ventricles stop contracting. Um, and it's before the ventricles start filling again. So basically not much is happening during this isovolumic relaxation. But what we can see here is these, these valves are closed, the AV valves, that's why it's iso, isovolumic. There's no change in volume. So that lasts um, a brief period. And then we've got ventricular filling start again. This is the start of the cycle according to this. Um, we'll keep going because I started up here. So ventricular filling, we're going to have blood come in from circulation 
both systemic and pulmonary circulation, and that's going to passively fill the atria and then passively fill the ventricles. So this is a passive process that is just due to, again, those, those valves that AV valves are just hanging open, so blood can just flow right into them. So that's a large portion of, of filling. It's actually about 80% of blood fills ventricles by this passive flow. The entire heart is is actually relaxed in diastole. Then we've got back where we started, that atrial contraction. This is going to cause about 20% of the blood. So this is gonna basically be our, it's called the atrial kick. It's the remaining blood in the atria that's going to be forced now into the ventricles that then allow the ventricles to be real full and close those AV valves. So that's the, the breaking up of this ventricular diastole. And notice atrial systole is happening during a portion of this ventricular diastole. So the atria can contract even though the ventricles are relaxed, right? Okay, and then you start over again. You can walk through this yourself. Let's have you do this as a learning check. So here we go. Label the four phases of the cardiac cycle. Shown here, one of them has two components. So this one right here has two components. It's all one phase. If you need help, here are the names of the phases and the one that has two events. 